Let's make our tough faces. Hey, how you guys doing? Welcome to episode numero dos, number two. And uh, we're here one more time. I hope you guys enjoyed episode one. It was an introductory thing uh, done very amateurly because um, an amateur at this, I just learned how to do all this stuff. Um, but obviously I'm a natural in front of a camera and people, but I am not a natural at editing. So if you see things that are just like, you know, retarded or, you know, should I say in a more correct way, um, not well done. It's, uh, my fault. So anyways, um, I am going to have a nice chat today with, uh, guitar hero. F at least for me, he is one of the best riff masters in the world. He plays in Cataclysm and his name is JF. We're going to do a, a little, we're going to have a little chat with him, talk about the new record. And we're going to do, uh, talk about things that are happening. Um, as you know, this pandemic has not uh, decided to stop or take it easy on us. It's still going super strong. And, um, you know, I thought it'd be over by the summer. Honestly, at the beginning, I was like, yeah, it'll be done by the summer. And then, you know, we'll start slowly getting back to it. But it doesn't seem like that's the case. So I'm hoping that things will get better or some sort of treatment or something will come soon and we can, you know, get back to normal. Um, other than that, I'm very happy about the single that we just released called The Kill Shot. Um, song that I, you know, was really proud when we were finished with it. Um, as you might notice, Cataclysm has changed a little bit our sound. We've come up with a more aggressive driven direction um, that we are feeling very comfortable with at the moment. And, um, you know, every record, we're going to have our own emotions. It's going to have their own place in the history of Cataclysm. But this record is just like you know we put our boxing gloves on you know so very happy and i hope you guys enjoy it please leave your comments on the bottom let me know uh what you guys think uh of the song and if you have questions i uh, will choose a few and i will answer them next episode um that's it pretty much uh looking forward to um keep this thing going it's very new like i said uh, i'm not very good at it but i'll do my best and uh to keep you entertained and um pretty much that's it so let's get into the chat with jf leave your comments let me know how you're dealing with a pandemic as well and we've done the crazy stories you guys had and, and we'll i'll choose a couple of you guys and we'll make you part of this thing you know with us so um let's get into it we'll see you next week for episode three hey what's going on man nice to see you bro <laughs> what's up <laughs> how's quarantine life Man, it's, it's something. I got my wine. I'm surviving. It's, I got mine right. too. <laughs> it's been all right. Lot, lots of work in the studio, and I somehow managed to keep busy every single second of my days. It's pretty insane for a time where you think you would have nothing to do, and it's just like one thing after another. And then next thing I know, it's the end of the day. I'm going to bed. Pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> I've been losing my fucking head. <laughs> it's like, it's like I, I, I don't think I've ever spent so much time home. Like, it's been such a long, like, like it's not that long, to be honest, right? What are we talking about? Four or five months? Yeah. But it's the idea of thinking that you're going to be stuck for another four or five months. Yeah, that's a bit. That's what makes it crazy because yeah. it's like we're, we're stuck here for, for a while and, um, we're, we're like, fuck, you know, we're not going to go on the road at all. So it's like, wow, this is the first time for us, especially me and you. For those who don't I, know, me and JF started Cataclysm, you know, from the beginning. So we're, we're, we're together from day one with Cataclysm. We're talking about 
what was it, 1994? Yep, 92. Oh, 92. What am I talking about? 92, 91. <laughs> I'm losing it already. So, like, yeah. So, we're like, we're old farts. <laughs> so, basically, we, 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 uh, we go way, way back. And I don't think we've ever really taken a break except for the time when we stopped um, during that time where the band almost broke up between, I would say, Temple of Knowledge and Victims of the Fallen World, those two records, the two opposite records, the two bipolar albums we, have, we did, right? So I think we've never, like, took in this long of a break without playing a, a single show or whatever, one year, right? It's crazy. Yeah, it's the longest break we ever took. So, yeah, so it's... it's, it's it's cool, and I, I pr pretty much for myself, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of cool about the break, to be honest. I, I, I've not stopped in those, all these years, whether it's with Cataclysm or the management company I have and x day or whatever, we've not stopped. So I think it's kind of cool to spend some time with the family and all that. But I miss, I miss the traveling, man. I miss seeing you and uh, all the guys also touring and stuff. So, yeah, I'm hoping that... Uh, Pit stops at pubs. The pit stops <laughs> at the pubs. And Steph getting all crazy. <laughs> Steph, yeah. We'll, we'll go back to him later. Um, so basically, man, what do you, how do you feel about this record? Man, right? I'm so excited. I'm stoked. It's weird. I'm so stoked and I'm so happy about the record, but I hate that we cannot go out and promote it. Like we cannot... We're stuck at home, so we're doing our best to, to promote it. Doing all the interviews right now, it, it's awesome. The the feedback, and it's great to see that uh, people are in the same zone as we are with the music and everything. I uh, just uh, just can't wait to go out there and play new songs live and push this thing. Right, and we both started the interviews right process right now <laughs> for the album Unconquered and. Um... The response has been crazy. I don't know about your side, but all the interviews I've done, it's like people are like, you know, the, the magazines are like, what happened to you guys? <laughs> and like, it's, like, it's like you guys just came out of the gates with like some fucking crazy shit. And, uh, you know, but for me and you, I think it was kind of a natural thing. Like we, we yeah. you know, you came up to Chicago, you stayed at my house for a while and, you know, I have a home studio where we, where we recorded some of the, the record, especially all my vocals were done, were done in my home studio. And, um we it was just natural you came we did it it was just like, yeah. we, we, like okay, we, got a, we got a, all these new songs like all right they're cool we looked up we that tweaked the arrangements a little bit and change a few things here and there but mostly the basis was there right from the from the bat we, we didn't fuck around though like you came and it was just like like you know we we, we wanted aggressive Mm -hmm. You know, it was like baseball bat. Let's let's break shit with this record, and and that was the idea behind it, and it just came naturally. There was no bullshit about it, um, and we wanted to go back. I find right, like we were discussing, like, hey man, let's let's go back to the times of when we were just me and you writing the record, and um, go back to the roots a lot, like Shadows and Dust, or Any Fire, and The Arms of Devastation, those type of records, where I think. We were we took we took the horns and and just did, just did it you know and uh, and people seem surprised but I'm not surprised like for me it's just you know I think some people don't understand that cataclysm is like it's it's an emotional ride every record is a different emotion and like meditations was something different than this album and it's this album we felt really aggressive and be like hey we you know we want to do this. You know, you upgraded to your so to your seven string guitar. And why why did you decide to do that? Well, what was the idea I behind kinda, it? I was thinking about bring bring it in, into the into our sound uh, like from a few albums ago, but I wasn't ready yet because it's a big change to readapt. And also because Cataclysm always did thing a certain way, and it's a big change to go from six to seven in our jar and the setup live and everything that's involved in it. But it was just the timing was right. I picked up the guitar. I started writing those, those super heavy riffs and then the whole range that it opened up. I think, I think it's what's getting people excited as well. It's like opening up a whole new range that we didn't have before. And we can play with 
everything we had before, but it's just more stuff we can do. I think it's just, it just came naturally. I'm glad we did it. And I'm looking forward to write more songs actually, because it feels like we were in the zone and then we had the album, the album done and we're like, man, I want to keep writing. It was right. The big question is how we're going to handle this live. Because <laughs> we have songs that are on six strings. Now we're on seven strings. How are we going to do this? I want to keep the same tuning for, uh, I, want, I want the old songs to remain in their original tuning. So I don't want to change that. But I'm pretty comfortable playing the old songs on the seven string. It's mostly just about forgetting that there's an extra string there and just you, you play them. I'm very uh, I'm natural at it now because I'm, I'm mastering the instrument quite well. So I'm not too worried about the live. It's easy for me to go from one to another. So I could do sets, say, say if, we, if we have to travel somewhere on a festival, I don't have enough space to bring four or five guitars. I'm just going to bring my two seven strings. I can play the full set with the seven strings. And wow. It works flawlessly. Or if we have, we're going on a tour and I want to bring more guitars and I can as well. So it depends on the situation. It sounds complicated to me, man. The seven <laughs> strings, you know, remember when we, when we used to like, you, you started producing the records and like always admired the fact that you could understand yourself with, with a big board, all these little dots and numbers and everything. And I was looking at it like, oh my God, I, 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 I'm having a headache just looking at all these knobs and everything like, like you have right now in your studio. And I'm like, <laughs> I always admired you with that. Uh, it, it takes some sort of talent to be able to decipher that stuff and have the patience to learn everything, you know? Like for me, it's just always been like a, like a challenge, let's say that like uh, things like that that are super complicated that look like engineering type of thing, you know, like... I'm more to the point type of person, as you know me real well. So um, it's it's cool that you've been able to do that and then adapt to a seven string, be able to like think, hey, you know, we're going to do this. I'm going to have to either swap guitars or I'm going to have to play on the seven string the whole show, which is kind of crazy to readapt your, your, your stuff, you know. And Steph, I mean, Steph, you know, he's going to be what, going from a four to five also, right? Mm -hmm. So... What is he going to do? You know, Steph he yeah, has a couple I mean, of beers on stage. doesn't know he's there. <laughs> he's make the way. sound man is like, no more Steph. <laughs> you remember that show in Switzerland at the Z7 where it was like uh, outside? I don't know if you remember that one. It was an outdoor at the Z7. I remember the Steph show. And the show was over. And he was eating up all the time of the other band that was playing after us, which we were, I think it was that we were one of the last bands. I don't remember what it was. And the show's over. We walked right off the stage. And here's Steph on stage, remains on stage doing all these, like, this, these, these, these moves and with his bass and, like, doing the <laughs> Ric Flair, woo! You know, like, <laughs> on stage is like, yeah, a couple too many that night, huh? <laughs> that's cool but anyways uh, what do you think he's doing right now <laughs> <laughs> definitely <laughs> that's Steph so basically um, yeah man I just you know it was pretty rough ride to also um, you know going back to the record doing doing this single uh, in Atlanta right when we did the kill shot when we got there it was just me and you that got to the location. Yeah. And then we waited all fucking day. We got there, what, a day early, right? And then what happened? I think, I think we got, like, we had, they had canceled flights. Yeah, they had a canceled flights. They couldn't make it the same time as us. So, they, uh, they so the whole day. And then the next day, we, we lost an entire day also waiting for him, I think. And then he got there super late at night. So it was crazy because... Um, for some reason, they were having all these difficulties getting there from Canada. We were, you know, Jeff lives in Texas. I live in, I, I was living in Chicago and I'm in Florida. And, uh, and we, we both were trying to get to Atlanta at that time. We got there right away, but those guys were stuck in Canada for a long time and uh, they, they, uh, they couldn't make it. And then we almost had to cancel the whole shoot. And then they finally made it. I think it was like eight or nine o'clock at night when they got there. 
we with Scott uh, Hansen, which was the director, and he was super cool because he was like, "We're doing this no matter what. You're here. Let's fucking do it." The actors were there; they had already shot everything. They were just waiting on us, and we just plugged and play, and boom, did it. Whatever it was, whatever that video is, like you, you I have no idea how close it, it got to fucking got canceled. You know, it was it was really a crazy situation. And anyways, we got it done. Um, the song's idea is uh, very, I guess, explained a little bit on some posts. It was very Machiavellian, very, um, you know, revenge oriented type of song where something bad happens to somebody and then you plan your revenge, you know. And I think it has a lot to, a lot in a, in a, the idea behind it is very, very cataclysm in the way of, you know, we've been a band that's been through so much crap that it's like, you know, I don't know if you agree with me, but like we always, always seem to come back somehow and do something that awes people or go, they go like, what the fuck happened? You know, like, and it's like, I think we're kind of having that moment right now with this record where we're coming back and like hitting back at anybody that thought this band couldn't do an extreme record or do, can do anything else than just whatever, you know, some of the songs that didn't, they didn't like over the years or whatever. So um, again, we didn't do it for that reason, right? We just, it was just a natural. I mean, we, we do, we do what we always do and we do it because we love what we do. Right. There's not, it's not like we're trying to go, oh, we're going to do this or we're going to go this way or just do it because we thought, it, we think it's great and it's fun. Right. And I, and this record was not any different except I think it's a testament to the chemistry we have together writing music throughout all these years. I think it really comes in together on this record because we mostly did it together as opposed to say meditation where we were more all involved into the process. Right. This one is me and you and we always had that chemistry and it's all over this record. I feel this magic that we have together writing, it's totally there. I'm very oh, it is. And then when we finished it, we knew, right? We said we did the record. We let it sit. We gave, we came back to it. And then we're like, fuck, it's good. We're not touching anything. You know, like we knew, like, you know, the uh, record was done when we were touring um, in December last year with, with uh, Whitechapel and the Flesh mm -hmm. God Apocalypse on the MTV tour in Europe. And we already had it finished. And we were listening to it. And we were like, that's not gonna it's nothing that's gonna change on this we're happy right so and and that's why it's like we knew like we're gonna release this kill shot first single and because it was the one that has a little bit of everything in it we didn't we didn't you know we knew that you know let's 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 also um you know do the song that we felt it was the right you know uh way to start it you know but the record's diverse. It's not all like that, right? And don't get scared. There's songs on there that blow away kill shot as far as extremity is concerned. That's not even the issue. But it's not about being extreme. It's about doing the right album for Cataclysm now, you know. And uh, I think uh, I, I think we did we did the right record, you know, and we're, we're happy about it. And everybody in the band was happy about it when when we finished it. And uh, you know, it's been cool. I, I, I have a question for you regarding um, um, Colin Richardson, the producer of the album. Tell me how, you know, you got this incredible, iconic guy to come on board and do this great record with us. How, 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 did, you, how did you get that done? Well, Colin, for me, was always been the guy. Even back in the day when I first started doing engineering stuff and working in studios and mixing i would always compare my stuff against collins because to me that's the best there is i didn't even think when i first heard of colin is through chris chris Kensey because uh, i was talking to him because we did some stuff together and i we've been We've been talking through through these past couple of years, and he says, "Well, Colin lives a couple streets away from me. I could ask him if he wants to do this with me." And we're like, "Yeah, sure, <laughs> ask him." 
they came back. They were like, we would love to do your record. Just keep us, uh, keep us uh, in mind with the, the timeline and everything. When do you want to do it? We'll figure out a way to do it. Because Colin doesn't own a studio. So we had to rent Andy Sleep Studio to do this and organize everything. This is the backstage, right? Backstage yeah. in the UK. Um, and, and then for people who don't know, Chris Clancy um, was in the Mutiny Within. Yep. No, signed to Roadrunner, right? He's an incredible yep. writer. Yeah, he's a great, he's a, he's writer. a great writer. And he's a great, um, he's a great producer as well. The combination of both was, was magic for the Cataclysm record, I find. Because there was a lot of little things that they brought to the table. They were like, hey, why don't you try this? Why don't you do this? Which I thought was cool uh, between both of them. You know, like Colin is just that legendary icon guy behind the board. But also Chris was the guy that was like also really working like, you know, hard behind this record. Like was always in touch and like, let's do this. Let's try this. And, you know, just a good team. What do you think? Yeah, it was a good combination of Colin having these classic ears for the jar. Just what he does is magic. And then you have Chris that. He's more modern and he's pushing uh, these new ideas on us. And the combination of the modern and the best of the old school together, plus whatever we do and what, what we bring to the table, it's just a great recipe for success. And really happy. For all you millennials or your new, new young generation, Colin Richardson is like, uh, uh, you know, for at least for us, a legendary producer who produced albums like, you know, they did the Slipknot records, uh, like he did one or two records from Slipknot, I believe, in Machine Head, uh, Carcass, I think Napalm Death. He's done a lot of, he's done some some of the biggest, uh, yeah, Bullet from my Valentine, and, you know, and... like just like a lot of classic records and uh, just an all around great producer. Um, and he was retired. Yeah. Technically, right? He was just doing some underground stuff. And then he heard the demo. Colin is in the, his 60s now. He was retired. He loves doing this still. But now I think he wants to do more. And he gets, he's getting back in the game. And they're Don't say that. All the bands are going to go and get him now. We need him for me, for us. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to keep doing some stuff. Him, him and Chris are working together a lot. Cool. Well, uh, we wish them the best. They're, they're both yeah. awesome, and uh, hopefully they'll do our next record again. Yeah, right? well, You're hearing right now, we need you next album again. <laughs> we really like the direction of the sound, right? I think it's one of the best Cataclysm-produced records. Yeah, you know, sound, production, you know, just everything just came together, right? And uh, I, I, I'm happy about it. Um, what's your favorite track on this record? What's the one that, that hits you the most? So many cool songs, but I do like Underneath the Scars a lot. For me, it's just... It, I'm getting that one a lot on... on, yeah. on, on uh, I'm getting that one a lot from magazines. And it's a coincidence that it's going to be the next single? Maybe? Maybe. I, I don't know. For me, it we was... Had it chosen, we had it chosen before, and that's the one that came out. I like, I like Cut Me Down a lot. Mm -hmm. Focus to destroy you is a is a total pit song. We play that shit live. Forget it. It's gonna be the the whole fucking place, man. Like it's just such a brutal song, right? And uh, you know the way the way back home is just a really cool, you know, heavy, heavy, heavy slower track. You know, so the record's really diverse. I think, and I think a lot of people are gonna dig it. What else? What else you've been up to, man? Like what's what's going on with uh, your family and everybody? Your, your daughter is happy to yeah, have you home. Spending some time with the daughter. She's uh, she's about to start school now. Well, we just heard today that it's gonna be a virtual school for. Her. Oh no, virtual! Oh shit! <laughs> well, it's better. I mean, here in Florida, we're like my daughter's starting school too. Mm -hmm. So basically, she's in, she's going to preschool. You know, she's four and a half. So she's like, she's four right now. So this year she's in preschool and then next year she starts elementary. So, but this right now, they decided that they're, they're going to have, um, they're going to have school going. It's in Florida. They're like total rebellious with everything, I guess, over here. I don't know if it's smart, bad or whatever, but they, they, they seem to keep it open. So we might get COVID, man. <laughs> I don't know. The kid goes to school, brings it home. I don't know, man. This whole thing is kind of like a weird scenario. Like, 
you don't know what to believe, right? I'm sure everybody that's listening right now, they're like, you know, all these conspiracy theories and all these things that are happening, nobody knows the truth. And, you know, you have scientists, politicians, uh, religious, you know, factions, whatever you want to call them, everybody's calling it a different thing. And I wish we just had somebody say the truth and then we know and everybody follows it and then we're going to be all right, you know. But this is my philosophy on it. I don't know if you agree with me. We don't know what it is 100%, right? There is, for sure, you know, it's there. It's happening, right? So, because we know people that had it. And, you know, it looks like it's a severe flu, heavier than normal. Obviously, what you're seeing and what you're hearing and the people we know recovering. Um, But why take a chance? If the chance is 1% that it's true, take the mask, right? Just put it on and just do it. Like, that's my philosophy on it. I have friends in other bands and stuff and good friends that are like, you know, I, I'm not wearing a mask. They're never going to let me, you know, make me wear a mask. You know, I want my decision and that's up to you. But I think my philosophy on it is like, if even if there's a small chance that it's real or whatever, wear the mask. What do you lose wearing? it? Two minutes, grocery store, grab your stuff, leave. That's my philosophy. I mean, I don't want to turn this into a nothing political or crap like that. You know, me and you are not into that crap in any ways, but I just want, uh, I just want this to be over so we can get back on the, pro, on the road, take planes like human beings again, and then just do what we do best. You know what I mean? Like I just, I miss it. And, uh, you know, all the bands I manage, you know, like I miss them too. And like, you know, uh, you know, going on the road and stuff, you know, they're all like freaking out right now. And, and, and you know, it, it's, I used to coordinate all that stuff and I miss it too for them. You know, it's like, and everybody's in the same boat. But, I think anything that can be coordinated, right? Anything yes. coordinated that can work, stop this shit. <laughs> just let's get back to get, <laughs> get back to work. But um, yeah, man. And, you know, in the end, uh, um, I think you know we we you know again going back to we, we derail a lot with this with this stuff. It's easy to go on different subjects, but. Um, even the artwork on the album, what, what, like, what did you think when you first saw it? Remember when I said, hey, man, I want to bring back the Heart Beast, and you weren't too sure about that one. Yeah, it was you like... A, you had a back and forth on it. No, it was like, it was kind of like the Heart Beast for me, it represents a successful era in our career. I really liked the albums we did with him, and I felt it was kind of a thing of the past, and then we should look forward to something different, but Bringing back, bringing it back the way it looks, I was blown away with the way uh, Andrew. No, uh, Blake, Blake Armstrong. Blake Armstrong. Yeah. When Blake did the cover, it was awesome. Well, I saw what he did on the Inflames record, and he made, he made the Jester dude look real. And I was like, hey, you know, this guy, he could do it. And uh, he jumped on it. He was awesome. And he, he's a great artist. And, and I, I think the the um the beast came out awesome like it just looks like he's real you know what i mean so so if you're gonna do it we do it into a modernized thing and this brought bring him back to life you know and you know unconquered the band's almost 30 years old we're old farts now right we still look okay yeah, right <laughs> not bad you know? not bad for him for, for <laughs> and, and and almost 30 years old, we, because we started when we were real young, we were kids, high school, you know, mm-hmm. being bad boys. He, Jeff, always in detention, by the way, I remember. Mm-hmm. He used to go to school with my cousin. They were always in detention. And, and that's how they got to know each other in detention and then, you know, introduced them to me and we started Cataclysm. But, um, you know, he, he, he came in on board with me and we did this. But um, 30 years almost. Album's called Unconquered. We called it Unconquered when we were in the studio, we were in the studio in Chicago with me, and we decided, hey man, we need a title that's gonna be like, we're still here after all these years and strong, you know, like nothing's gonna take this apart. And we're like, and I looked at my tattoo, like this one right here, 
and it says Invictus, right? And and a lot of people know that's my thing, and it means Unconquered in in Latin. And I was like, dude, let's let's call it Unconquered, you know? And and uh, we had a couple of names that we had floating around a little bit longer, or whatever. But we ended up on just Unconquered. That bring back the beast. That's where you were like not sure, <laughs> and then. I just think all these elements together, it's just the right time, you know, like it just makes sense, you know, the rebirth of the band and somehow, you know, and that's, that's my gut feeling on it. And at least, yeah. from, you know, like the way I we've see it, through, we've been through so much in this crazy ride. Bro. There's a lot of stuff coming up, a lot, a lot of stuff that's going to be changing. A lot of stuff that's uh, uh, looking really promising ahead as well. Unfortunately, you know, we don't got touring. But we got still a couple of things. We've got a Swiss Swiss festival that's that's uh, planned, but don't know if that's going to happen or not. You know, so we'll see. Uh, that's in September somehow, somewhere, and um, you know, we'll see if that is going to happen. But uh, other than that, we're just going to get ready and uh, keep promoting this record. I'm telling you guys out there that that are watching this, man, we we we're very proud of this record. I think you guys are going to dig it. If you're an old Cataclysm fan, you're going to find something you like. If you're a new Cataclysm fan, you will really dig it. Um, so if you never liked Cataclysm, there's still a little chance you might like this record. It's different, right? Um, but we're just, we're just happy with everything. And, um, you know, I, I, um, I, I, I trying to um, uh, look ahead in a positive way. I know that it's difficult right now for a lot of people out there as well, but it's going to be, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. We're going to find a way out. You know, Cataclysm's always been about positivity. Um, JF was one of the guys that also decided that uh, we should release the record in a time where it's difficult, like now, right? We didn't want to wait. Yeah, because uh, it made no sense to me. The album's great. It's there. It, these are tough times that if it helps a few people feeling better, it, it helps me feel better. To work on this music and to have this music done uh, just having sure. music out yeah. there right it's a it's a therapy mm -hmm. it's always been and i for me at least it's always been a therapy you know we call the last record meditation it's not because we yeah. get on the floor and look at a tv and start doing meditation it's not i mean at least for me that's not me but um Although my wife told me I should try that because I'm always, you know, high strong or whatever. But I, 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 I'm like, you know, it was called meditations because of the idea of, you know, therapeutic for me. The, the album, you know, was therapeutic. It's, it's my therapy. It's my to-go uh, release, you know. This record, I was super aggressive coming in it, uh, really pissed off. And uh, that's what came out. We came out and was like, bah, you know, <laughs> it's done, you know. So we hope you guys enjoy it. Um, what's your plans go moving forward next couple of weeks? What you got going on? Uh, just uh, more studio stuff. Got some uh, some work with the uh, Dying to Christ coming out. Oh, cool. Uh, got some uh, some other bands are joining in, <laughs> and I, I I'm starting to. I was looking at forward to a few weeks off and, and chill and then i see the, the work piling up on my desk and i'm like oh, well, you're, you're lucky <laughs> a lot of people don't have any of that you know yeah. so that's awesome you know so that's cool we want to also take a, a moment to thank all the people that have been supporting the band ordering the album and stuff i am doing some selfish promotion right now it's a cool ass shirt and it came out great Con conquered came out cool right so yeah. i like it I've been wearing it. Um, you can find it on our cataclysm.ca um, website. If you guys want to get bundles or whatever, you can you just, just get it out there. And the shirts ship now. Everything else ships later when the record comes out. Um, that's it, man. Pretty much uh, looking forward to seeing you again, man. I wanted to just give a quick chat and say hi to all the fans. Is, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add and about the record or anything else you want to say to people that are watching right now. Just give it a shot. I think it, I think it, it's a great album. Yeah, not not because because it's a new one, but it's just it's uh, it's just came out so so it just all the stars were aligned and it, it's it's just a great piece of music. So check it out. Cool, brother. Well, you take care of yourself and don't drink the whole bottle of wine like I'm gonna do tonight. And uh, <laughs> be a good boy. <laughs>
<laughs> Take care of yourself, man. We'll see you soon. I'm going to give you a call uh, a couple, couple of days, all right? Sounds good. Take care, bro. Cheers. Bye.